It's another beautiful day and I'm so excited to know that you are there. Welcome to another edition of Editors Forum. My name is Rita Omodia. And today on the program, we'll be talking about different things that have happened in the court during the week, as usual, as we talk about trending issues concerning our nation. And the first on our list here is the Buhari President, Muhammad Buhari, seeking a re-election for next year's general election, that is 2019. And as usual, we've had different controversies, different perspectives, saying different people with their different opinions to this declaration of the 2019 general elections. And I'll not be talking about this alone. I have distinguished gentlemen in our midst. I have that will be talking with me on this topic. And also during the course of the show, we'll be looking at the state of security in the nation, in our country, Nigeria. Uh, we have Mr. Yemi Saka. Welcome to the show. That's, it's nice to be here. Fantastic Saturday. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. And of course, we have Sonia Odibashi. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thank you for the privilege. Yes, <laughs> and Victor I, I, yes, the people's man. You're thank you so much for having me, having me once again. Yes, you're all welcome. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us on the show. Now, during the course of the week on Monday, President Muhammad Buhari announced his intention to veer for the 2019 presidential election. He made his intention known at a closed-door meeting of the National Executive Council of the All Progressives Congress, APC. The president said he was responding to the clamor by Nigerians for him to recontest in 2019, adding that he wanted to accord APC Neck the honor of being the first to know. Now let's take a look at for the stories and reactions in this package here. Thank you very much for joining us again. Of course, the package, the visuals of the reactions of Nigerians will still be coming up during the course of the show. But for now, let's take a look and discuss right here about Bo President Buhari seeking for a re-election for 2019. And of course, I'll start with Yemi Saka. Now, of course, before a president would say he wants to recontest, we have to evaluate his scorecard on what he has done so far. So in your own opinion now, how would you rate President Muhammad Buhari's scorecard since 2015 and now? I probably want to like um, deflect that question up, uh, <laughs> if I'll answer you from another perspective. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari has constitutional right to seek an election and it can't just go beyond two terms in office. It's not left for Nigerians to either accept him or reject him at the polls. Well, if, um, if from um, by Mabadus Bari's um, estimation, evaluation, and what have he feels he has done well enough, fantastic, so be it. And if Nigerians feel he has been a disaster in the last three years in office, uh, by May 29, 2019, we will know. All right. Okay, Sonia Dubashi, let's have your take on it. Well, uh, I, you know, I like his, uh, his, 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 approach. his, his <laughs> approach to it. But um, uh, in as much as uh, he has a legal right to, to, to recontest, uh, the reactions, I think, the, the reactions skew towards the, the, other, the, the left, you know, the, other, uh, the opposite side. Mm -hmm. It shows that the president is already facing legitimacy crisis. And when you're having legitimacy crisis, when the people begin to resist, or maybe you, you have stronger, more opposition than people who are accepting you, then you have a legitimacy crisis. And that is a strong signal to the direction, you know, that's a strong signal to, to how the people evaluate your own performance. Or your person, but this is not about his person, about his performance. You are asking about his performance. Yes. So when you look at that, you look at the economy. This, the, the indices are there. He has not done well. No matter even the the MBS, the statistics they had reviewed over time, uh, when it went down and when it started coming up, even at the position it is now, they keep manufacturing scientific uh, figures telling you inflation is dropping. The prices are going up in the market, practically. So it shows that there's no correlation between the scientific figures and the reality in the society. Then security, the henchmen are still killing. The bonds are still exploding. 
kidnappers are still on rampage. So, and the recent time, the president said we should, they should blame Gaddafi, a dead man. It shows he has lost self-confidence in managing national security of Nigeria. Okay, then you look at the anti-corruption war. Uh, they, they went into the list of looters as a tool of propaganda. And when the team began to boomerang, they have to put a punctuation. Because international response, responses to that, uh, to that action did not favor the government itself. Internal responses, even from institutions that, has, that support the government in the fight against corruption, uh, Sarah, for instance, did not even take side with the government. The government. So when you look at the, all this, we put the statistics together, I think it's not encouraging. I like the way you looked at it now, Sonia Diba, she looked at the statistics. But now, Victor, I like to call you the people's man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that one came from. No, that's, my own, that's my own take. Yeah, that's what you said. I always but, like calling people. That shows the popular like, capacity <laughs> for the presidency. That is great. All right, Victor Ayala, yes, yes, how um, would you rate uh, President Buhari's um, forecast? Before performance? we talk about his performance, I'll look at the aspect of uh, image. Image is everything. Uh, why did I say so? I said so because uh, in 2011, he said that he was going to contest just once. Uh, based on his uh, head, uh, based on his stage, he said then that uh, if he was elected by 2015, he would have been 73 years old, and at that time would have been too old, you know, to seek re-election. He was elected in 2015. Uh, between 2015 and now, he's already 75. So I don't know why he wants to seek re-election when in 2011 he said that he was not going to, he was not going to seek re-election. And one thing about life is that a mass word must be his board. And the image is not bought. I'm a public relations uh, practitioner. You don't buy image. You don't go to the market and buy it. You, you earn it by your performance, <laughs> by your pronouncement over, over a period of time. So this is a man that certain people have tagged as a man of integrity. A honest man. If, you, if, he, if truly he's a man of honesty, why, uh, or a man of integrity, why will he not keep to his uh, promise that he will not seek re-election? Re what has changed? Has his age depreciated? Or is he aging? So these are the questions we must ask. Because, because, no, but, but, because you say you want to no, I didn't say you are clamoring if you come back. No, but, but, Victor, no, no, not, not, no, I'm but, not part of those no, clamoring. Let's I'm get this. He, he, he has an what excuse. I'm, what I'm saying, no, you, there's no excuse. No, because that was 20. We are talking about integrity here and image. Okay. As I have said before, in public relations, you don't buy, you don't go to the market and say, ah, I want a good reputation, sell it to me. No, you earn it by your pronouncement, by your, your, your behavior over the years. That is how you earn a, a, a positive image. Now, this is a person that people have, <laughs> have turned or tagged as a man of integrity, a honest man. What I know about a man of, about integrity is somebody who adhered to high moral principle. So if he's truly a man of integrity, why is he religion now? That is All the right. question we should ask. Thank you very much. Now, of course, we've taken a brief look at the reactions. Of course, they've given their opinion. Tony Odibashi is looking at the performance and talking about security, the economy, and seeing how the nation has been so far. And of course, Victor, I brought another look to it, and he said that in 2011, President Muhammadu Buhari said that he would not go for a second term. And now he's seeking a second term. We all have our different opinions. But now <laughs> let's take a look at what all the Nigerians are saying concerning the declaration of President Muhammad Buhari to run for the 2019 elections. So security is at the lowest level it's ever been. The economy is at the lowest level it's ever been. What can this administration claim about the economy? The rent foreign investment is down. The stock market is down and went down 150 billion naira today because of the bad news of the, the man that says he wants to run for a second term. And that is not how you govern. Are you the president of the South or the president of the whole of Nigeria? So we knew that this problem would be there. How do we know that we're not going back to the same thing? And by the way, I don't blame people who voted for him the first time because the propaganda organized by Tinubu, who is now being trashed by this party. He, did, he deserves it, by the way. The propaganda is what caught the people. The lies that they told. Nobody can beat PMB. Nobody. The man is upright. The man is honest. The man is truthful. The man is fair to all concerned. 
the man is delivering, even though his enemies will not believe it. There are people who don't want Nigeria to be, to be repositioned or retooled, you know. They want Nigeria to be as it was before, where everybody will be done with stealing money. Just like a big family. Just like a big family. You have these Ghana wranglings, some people will agree, some people will not agree. It's impossible for everybody in APC in Nigeria to be on the same page. But in a democracy, it's majority. Majority. The senior president we are talking about was elected by one third of his senatorial zone in Huara State. And he got to Abuja. And by the magnanimity of the people of, um, of, of the senators, they elected him as senior president. You're welcome back. You're still on Traditors Forum. And of course, we had all the stakeholders reacting to President Muhammad Buhari's declaration to run for the 2019 election. And now back here, we have had some people now saying that why didn't he address the media? Why didn't he address the social media concerning his declaration? And why did he have to go into a closed door meeting of the National Executive Council of the All Progressives Congress? And some people are insinuating that with this, him not coming out clearly, uh, an open speech to talk about the declaration that hope next time he wouldn't say he wasn't the one that said it. Now, what do you feel about this? Do you feel that his closed door meeting was okay? Or do you feel he should have come out formally, a formal declaration openly to the social media, on Twitter, and everywhere as it's done in other countries to declare his intention to run for the 2019 elections? Yemi Saka, let's hear from you. Well, I am smiling mischievously. And <laughs> and <laughs> I, I think it's over a year now, even two years that we've been privileged or pretend as Nigerians to hear our president talk to us and address us. And that is untrue what, what we known, what is known as a presidential media chat. Yes, it's not written anywhere in the constitution, it's not written anywhere in the you know um, the hacks of maybe services or what have you. But we've it's come to be a tradition where presidents um sit down with interact with journalists and gives Niger give Nigerians an opportunity to have a peep into his administration and his state of mind. And what have you, and that's what he has deprived of for over two years. And um, President Mahmoud Abai would never address the media for obvious reasons, best known to him and the presidency. There are a lot of questions he needs to answer, he hasn't answered them. There are a lot of things he needs to talk to Nigerians, speak to Nigerians about, he hasn't, and I don't think he would do that. So it's just to me, I'm not surprised. This is normal escape route from, from, you know, from the scrutiny of Nigerians. Nigerians were able to assess, evaluate, and indict former President Gulo Jonathan because he brought himself to the slab. That was when he said stealing was not corruption. Nigerians took it, you know, went AYR with it. We need the president to talk to us. Let us even have it. Let's, let's know your state of mind. Let's able to, we, we are not psychologists, we are not psychiatrists, but let us, from an armchair psychoanalysis of it, let us know if you are fit enough to rule us for another one day. That's my own opinion. He has to talk to us as Nigerians. He doesn't have to just go sit down somewhere, frame additional, garbage, he'll prepare speech for him. We don't want to prepare speech. We want spontaneous responses to issues raised with the our team. All right, thank you very much, Yemi Saka. And of course, it's of his own personal view that the president should come out and talk to Nigerians. And the president, when he stated this in his closed door meeting, he said he was responding to the clamor by Nigerians. Yeah, some Nigerians. That, that is what he said. Now, so, um, Sonia Dibashi, let's hear your take on this. Yeah, but on the first issue, on the, on the, on the process of uh, declaration, uh, I think that's the first stage. He has not made mistake in that direction. That the first, the first stage is that you notify your party, your political party, and maybe you put it in writing. That he's here to make a formal declaration. Okay, it, it was just a uh, governor. Yeah, I was testing the waters. Oh, oh no, it was governor <laughs> of I who tweeted while the meeting was going on. Mm -hmm. And the man was reading his speech, the man just put it on Twitter, and people picked it up from there, you know. So, but that's the first stage. Then he will come back and write the party. 
after which he will make a formal declaration and contesting for president. So we, are, we will still get to that stage. Okay, so Sonja Divashi is waiting for the president. Yes, yeah, so we are waiting. That's yes, we are talking now. Yeah, I'm looking at you. I'm expecting to you to go grey, waiting for him to come out. <laughs> 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 so you yeah, like, your old No, but he will, he will do it. No, he said he will do it. Okay. He said this is, he has to notify the party first of all. Is, 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 that's the dynamics of politics. You have to notify your, your political party first before you notify outside. I think that's what he has done. Okay. So we are waiting <laughs> that is your own that. opinion right yes. now. Okay. Yeah, on, on the issue of um, Nigerians' clamor, well, uh, that, I think that just is about his opinion, what he thinks, or what his advisors are telling him. But the response in UK, when he went to London, Nigerians in UK, they, were con they, they went on protest. Yes. And the placard was obvious. No, it's some Nigerians because when they went to Nassau, when they went to Plateau on, on the sports assessment, it turned to a sort of campaign stuff for him. So yeah, yeah but we're not talking about the most recent one. After his statement, he traveled to UK. Yes, they... When he got there, Nigerians in London, they waited for him at the Abuja okay. house. And they said, no, you can go and tame the bloodthirsty X-Men. You can control them. And they told him that he cannot be protecting cows and not protecting human lives. So these messages are obvious to let you know that Nigerians are not clamoring for his comeback. All right. Thank you very I'm much. Not Nigerians. <laughs> Different people. Majority. Yeah, no, majority. If you take a, go and conduct the survey on the street, just take your camera, move from street to street, from bus stop to bus stop. Uh, you you want to, people will hear you. Your test might be okay. conducted in a biased, you know, environment. No, be open, be objective. Well, we don't have the statistics, <laughs> so we cannot foresee. No, no, get Nigeria to if talk. We have more people. The market, uh, the, 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 the traders, the Okada riders on the street. What do you think about Mr. President's second coming? They will respond. All right, before we go too far, let's hear from Victor Aya. Yes, um, what uh, the declaration of uh, the president is, uh, is, is a norm in this part of the world. There is no serving uh, politician that wouldn't say that it's, uh, constituent members of the constituency or Nigeria are the one clamoring for it uh, coming back. It's, it's, it's has, it has only been, been like that. If you talk about governor, chairman of local government area, councillor that represent the world, talk about president it's always like that so they will not come and tell you that they are the one that are aspiring to to come for a second term they will always you know pass it to the uh, to the masses so it's a way of life of of politicians <laughs> in nigeria so it's not peculiar to him but it is left for nigerians to decide whether they will really want him to come back or not it's not too far away uh, 2019 is just around the corner so on that day the nigerians will come out to, to elect the person they are really uh, clamoring for. So it's not by propaganda, it's not by just uh, making statements. That day is very close now. We shall know at the end of the day whether Nigerians actually clamor for a second term or not. So mm -hmm. we, shouldn't, we shouldn't crack <laughs> our head over that. I don't bother myself over such statements because I have my card with me and I know what I'm going to do with my card. <laughs> so nobody is going to use propaganda. They didn't use it for me in 2015 because I know what I wrote then, and I'm lot, a lot of people, you know, lambasted me today. The same people are calling me and telling me that I'm a prophet. I said, I'm not a prophet. Uh, we, you judge somebody based on his antecedents. Uh, I was in middle class in college when he, he became head of state, and I knew what we passed through there. And uh, when he wanted to come back in 2015, mm -hmm. I knew what I wrote, and people did not take me serious. Today, the same people, some of their homes have broken up, their wives have left them because they cannot eat very well, they have lost their job. So if you are hungry, nobody is going to tell you that you should, you should either clap for a party or clap for somebody or not. When you go to the market, the market woman who is selling is a bag of rice will not say because you are clapping for one man or political party that, okay, you are so sincere with this party, come and carry a bag of rice and go home and eat. No. You must dip your hands into your pocket and bring out the money to buy whatever you want to buy. So it's not a matter of say uh, this man is an angel, it's a saint. No, it's a citizen <laughs> or, prof or a, a genuine leader does not provide food for you. You must bring out your money. So when you get to the market, it is there you will know whether the person you are clamoring or clapping for is truly the person that you need or not. So that is it. That's why I don't bother myself <laughs> about this <laughs> issue. All right. Thank you very much, Victor. Uh, your vote is your power, no matter the declaration. Now, of course, a former president, um, Olusegun Obasanjo, has um, said that um, President Muhammadu Buhari should not 
we contest that. After that, he, there was a declaration. Now, what do you see to a former governor saying that President Muhammad Buhari should not recontest for the 2019 election, Yemi Saka? Yeah, I, I said this, um, I think, the last time I was here, and I think I'll say it again. If people could attack um, former general or chief, Olusha Gombasoja, targeting him failure while he was in office or any of these leaders or generals that have um, served Nigeria at one point or another in their life, failures because they are not criticizing Buhari. If a failure is, if a failure or failures now could come out and define or probably label a failure, that means <laughs> failure has gotten a new, attained a new height. And you know, it's, it's just, you know, when people say things like that, it's easier for you when you're, when you're, in, when you're in a system, your vision is narrow or tunnel, is it you have a tunnel vision. When you're out of it, you see things from a broader scope. And the, it's like this, it's like a warning or probably an advice to him. Now, but in, in the military, to the best of my knowledge, I think it's an aberration for a commission of some talk of a general to cry or say he's sorry. And if they're trying to save you, avert you from being disgraced, I think it's um, by their own understanding. I think they are just being true to you as a friend. But like people say, Obasan just has a vote, IBB has a vote, why don't you has one vote? Fantastic. But let's wait till then. All right, some people say that it was not right for President um, Obasanjo, former President Obasanjo, to have come out publicly and criticized the government of President Muhammad Buhari, looking at his own government. And some people say he has the right to do that. Now, still looking at what pre um, the former President Lushego Obasanjo said that he should not recontest. What do you see to this, Sonja Odubashi? Well, I, I think uh, the former President Obasanjo is playing the role of another statesman. We are all here in 2015, when his residence at Otta was turned into political pilgrimage by Buhari. Abiyokuta, sorry. <laughs> no, no, Otta. No, they went to Abiyokuta. Yeah, and Otta and Abiyokuta was turned into political pilgrimage by, by um, President Buhari and uh, Tinubu and others, where they were always frequenting, seeking his support for their movement, until they got to the point that he declared that he supported, he supported them. Now. After that, they moved to Mina, going after the former head of state, uh, uh, president also, um, General Rubangida, yeah. who also, after consultations, came to, to the public and said, I, I declare his support. I'll be to you. I declare his support for him. Now, if they had did so, they, they did so in 2015, and they are now coming in 2018 to say what they are saying, then why should anybody be blaming them? It means they have seen something which is different from what they saw in 2015, and they are now in Egypt. They are not the only ones. Fadan Baka was the one who prophesied that God sent the Queen Kube president <laughs> in 2015, that God has um, what is it called? abandoned uh, former President Jonathan. Uh, Pastor Tunde Bakari, those were the prophets that were behind him. Today they are singing different uh, uh, songs. So why? So it shows that if this group of people are seeing something differently, those who are now saying castigating the former president, either they are principal benef uh, no, beneficiaries from the status quo as it is, so they don't want it to slip off their hand. So they are talking the way they are talking. So <clears throat> the president, the former leader, the president is playing his role as an understanding, and I think that's the way I see it. Sorry. In right. addition to what you have said, I think the only regime or government OBJ has not criticized was his own directly, but he did that indirectly too. In, um, I think in the eight, early 80s or early 90s, he criticized on the, the regime of IBB <laughs> saying it's implemented policies without human face. He criticized <laughs> from the one, the regime of um, General Abacha. He criticized his presidency by virtue of in, um, investigating his vice president. Mm -hmm. he, criticized, he criticized President Gulag Jonathan. So, Abbas Sanjo has been consistent. <laughs> no, 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 but, but, but even beside that, those who are also tagging Abbas Sanjo as failure. Now, Abbas Sanjo left legacy. The telephone we are using today, in the past it was for the rich alone, GSM. Mm -hmm. Now everybody can get it. It's a legacy. Now, when they did, Abbas Sanjo 
wrote off Nigerian foreign debt to the tune of $30 billion. Okay? When part was paid and part was written off. It's a legacy. Today they are building that foreign that debt again. Okay? Now, when they did rebasing during the administration of President Jonathan, the Nigerian economy became the, light, the fastest growing economy in Africa and the largest. Now, the, the statistics that they adopted to get to that were the policies started from the opposite administration that got matured in the Jonathan administration. So those who are saying the money has failed should also go and take, have a comprehensive statistics of administration in the past so, when I go with tonight, yes. no, before you so, before you interject, I would still like to get Victor Ayer's view it, it, on this. It, it, yeah, so what I'm saying is they should look at all that. What legacy is a man in power living today? That's the question. All right, Victor Ayer, let's hear from you. Yes, um I think uh, we are a people that are known for hypocrisy. <laughs> we are sanctimonious <laughs> people. Uh, I say so because uh, when in twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen, or was it twenty fourteen? Twenty fourteen. That um, former president Obasanjo tore his uh, PDP uh, cap. <laughs> what the same people? What did they say? Did they not clap? <laughs> did they not eulogize it? Did they not praise it to high heaven that he has done the best thing? At that time, I was writing for the Union newspaper. Then, when uh, the then opposition party, the APC, Tinubu uh, and Buhari, we are going to uh, Abiyakuta to seek advice from uh, Obasanjo. I wrote in an article that then I was asking a question. I asked various questions, but one of those questions was that if PDP destroyed this country for 16 years, as the opposition had been saying, and Obasanjo led this country for eight, eight years. good years under the PDP uh, leadership, what were they going there to seek from him? Were they going there to <laughs> seek <laughs> advice from him to further destroy the country or what? Because I, I cannot see. The, the two issues, I don't know. You say PDP destroyed the country, and yet you are going to meet somebody who led the country under PDP for eight years to seek advice. Because then they describe uh, Obasanjo uh, as a navigator. <laughs> I use that word in that article, that is a navigator that they have come to seek his advice to help <laughs> them to leave this country. Then I was, I was pet too. So if at that time Obasanjo was an angel, a saint, that can give advice to any person. Why is it that now that he has be suddenly become an enemy? That he can no longer advise uh, the government that he brought to power. <laughs> without, I want to make it clear that without Obasanjo, there was no way the APC would have won that election. <laughs> if Obasanjo <laughs> has stood behind Jonathan in 2015, if he had not put his uh, uh, card, PDP card, and supported Obasanjo, uh, Buhari, there was no way they could have won that election. So what is the problem now? Now it's not telling you that you are not doing well. They criticize Jonathan for one major thing, security, that uh, the Shiba guests were abducted and Boko Haram was, where the soldiers were killing people. Today, what do we have? Boko Haram was limited to only the Northeast. Today, we have herdsmen transversing all throughout the Nusa Krani of Nigeria killing people in their farms. So if you compare the government of Jonathan and this one, which one is worse? This one is worse. So why will somebody say that oh, this, this government should continue? <laughs> A government where people, where blood is flowing every day. You cannot go to your farm. We don't have jobs. Almost all the factories have shut down. You now go to your farm, say, okay, let me go and take up a living in the farm. You see herdsmen coming, if, 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 they come and eat your grains. If you ask question, they hack you down. They say they are foreigners. Foreigners will come from other countries. To come and kill your citizen, you have no say. You cannot prevent it. And one disturbing statement that this man has made that really provoked me is that he said that Gaddafi was the one that trained these people. <laughs> and that those foreigners are coming here to infiltrate this country. Right, and then, then I ask question, is it only Nigeria that is in Africa? We have ordinary Libya there, sorry, Liberia. They have not gone there to kill people. They have not gone to Equatorial, Equatorial Guinea. They have not gone to Togo. It is Nigeria that claimed to be giant of Africa, of which this man, who, who, who was a, once a general, led before, that they are coming here to terrorize his citizens, yet he cannot do anything. Yet he wants to come back 
Good luck to those who have their PVC who want to vote for him. I have my own PVC. I know whom I will vote for. I cannot vote for somebody who, who is leading a country where people are being killed. You cannot go to farm. I'm not a party to it. Victor Aya has his own opinion. Of course, your vote is your power. And we definitely hope that the 2019 general elections will be a peaceful one. Well, now, Victor, let's look before at... Before you go, I want to chip in something. I take it away from No, you. let's just really look at... Okay. Oh, let's just really look at another topic here now. And of course, still talking about the state of the economy, state of the nation now. And we're looking at this aspect of security. And of course, we've heard different things. We've heard of the Boko Haram insurgencies. We've heard of Niger Desert militants who are saying that they are about to cease fire. Yes. And of course, we also heard of um, Inquirer State, the offer bank robbery, where a lot of lives have been killed. And of course, people are still complaining about the security situation in Niger. And uh, I have a statement here from the Benway State Governor, where we have lots of farmers' headmen clashes, and which he said Samuel Lawton, the governor of Benway State, on Tuesday told the internally displaced persons who were displaced due to Fulani headsmen attacks to go back home and use stones to defend themselves. This, he said, was because he was tired of keeping IDPs in camps. Now, Autumn explained that killings in the state had become one too many to such an extent that people were running from their homes. The governor said this during his visits to the displaced persons who were forced to flee their homes after arms men, Hamt Edmund, attacked Naka Gwe, less local government area of Benway State. Now, Autumn said that the killings were becoming uncontrollable and charged them to embrace self-defense. He said, David in the Bible, and I quote, David in the Bible, use ordinary stone to defeat his enemy. <laughs> it is now time for you to stay at home and use the stone in your homes to defend yourself instead of running away. Now, this is a statement of a Benway state governor where we've had lots of farmers, headsmen clashes, and we're talking about the state of security in the nation. Now, this is coming from a governor of the state. Yunisaka. I think okay. I want to start this. I'll start out with this, please. It is, it is, it is annoying. It is, a, it is an insult to our collective intelligence, and it's a you pin on my face telling me it's raining. Each time you use the word farmers, headsmen clash. This is headsmen killing people. Call a spade, the spade are not a cutlass. But because if you cannot, I do not want to sound politically correct. It is not a clash. You come, you see, it's easier for them. Those people push, pushing for this narrative to tell you that yes, it's a retaliation for cattle or cows being killed. But I'll ask you a question. That is not the first action. The first action is I'll cultivate my land for almost nine, six, nine months. When the thing is green for me to harvest, you come with a head of cattle or cows and you destroy my farm. Because I'm sensible enough and I'm, hum I'm a human being, I don't think the next thing for me to do is to kill you. Out of anger, I'm not just fine crime. I slaughter one or two cows. And you being a barbarian, so for my choice of words, not think the best thing you could do is to kill me or kill human beings in place of cows. That is wrong. That's a, so if, when you want to use the word, if you are trying to throw the line of the federal government saying farmers, headsmen clash, you are just trying to politically correct. It is headsmen killing people. And it's not just headsmen, it's full and headsmen. Because in my life since I was young until these days I've been growing gray mustache, I've not seen an Egyptian woman an ethnic man, a gala man, a bibio man, a bo man as a header. The common header you say around is a full animal. So I'm right to say full animal heads, man, killing people. That's the truth. Then secondly, we've had diverse, we've had confusing statements from the presidency. In, in if the presidency is organized, because I know right now from what they've been saying, they are confused. There's something called the President Intelligence Daily Briefing. The security head of security agencies brief you on the state of the nation, security-wise. The president commander is the chairman. Of National Defense Council, that is part G of the third schedule of the 1999 Constitution as amended. He's also the chairman of the Nigerian National Security Council, part I of that third schedule of the 1999 Constitution. So now, this this headsman farmers clash, could borrow in your word, the the high GP, who is the head of intelligence security apparatus in this country, said it was because of laws formulated and enacted by state governors. The Minister of Defense, who is a part and a member of the National Defense Council, National Security Council, said it was because of the blockade of the grazing route. Now, the president in Faraway, Libya, is now acting on another intelligence report, because I don't want to believe he said that from, he picked that up from the sky or cloud. There's no high cloud there anyway. He said it that, okay, fine, it was trained, what have you, gunmen, 
that fled from the, you know, after Gaddafi was killed. But the question any sensible person should ask President Mamadou Buhari is this. Does Nigeria borders Libya directly? No! Before you get to it, if my geography will not fail me, the closest country to Libya right now as we speak is even Mali. Okay, but before we go too far, now we're still looking at the statement now of the governor of the state yeah, telling no, the IDPs to go back No, to invariably, the, the governor is trying to play safe. He doesn't want them to come for his neck or come for his neck like for T.Y. Danjima. Invariably, just telling these people, go and defend yourself with what you have. The stone is a proverb. Jesus spoke to the was with Definitely. Me, was, relay, was related with his disciples in like how Yoba says, no, 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 Jesus about millennial sorrow. Jesus, um, Autumn was talking to people of Bedley Street in Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Go and use the stones you have at home. Your stones could be charms, could be guns, could be machete, but just go and defend yourself. All right, thank you very much. Now, Sonia Dibashi, now let's look at this now of the governor saying that the people should go and defend themselves. Now, what would you say of the government? Does it mean that the government can no longer take care of its citizens? Hmm. It's a complex situation, I know. It's complex and very risky. Nigeria is now at crossroad of nationhood. And when we get to the point when the state loses its monopoly of cohesion, then the state is as good as is, you know, disintegrating. Now, but it is complex in a way that I would have thought that leaders of political parties by now would have been thinking of inter-party uh, summit to talk about national issues, the economy, security, and all that. I was talking with somebody two weeks ago. Now, he said that there is a man. Now, the DSS tracked his conversation. He was to pay some people to destabilize the state. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, they tracked the telephone conversation. So, where he was to make the final payment, so he now landed there. So it was the DSA that was actually interacting with him when he landed in their hands. Uh, I think Ireland is still in DSS custody as of now. So when you now see situations like this, when persons that you never suspected begin to create disorder, fund disorder, then the country is in serious crisis. Now, we could as well shout, but the point is this, when a group or an association become so violent <clears throat> beyond the capacity, the violent capacity of a state, the state is moving towards extinction. Now, we are moving close to the state of nature, uh, nature okay? Some are saying, when T.Y. Dajuma made that statement, call for self-defense, they say it's a call for anarchy. At least the APC leadership says it's a call for anarchy. Now, we hear the Bene <laughs> governor making the same statement, no matter how directly or indirectly he's doing it. Or smartly. Okay. <laughs> now, it shows something is happening. Now, this is a, a state that is carrying too much, too he a heavy burden, cannot pay civil service. Uh, you know, you, you are there to also talk of governance, development, and all that. You are not caught enough from that budget to go and maintain IDPs. It's a height of frustration. My expectation, if only the president will wake up and be a strong leader does it mean that the Nigerian army has lost the capacity to defend the in territorial integrity of Nigeria? That's the issue. Does it mean that the Nigerian police has collapsed com completely? Because that is, these are the messages we are receiving. So what is the president doing about it? All right. Thank you very <coughs> much, Sonja Dibashi. Now, before we hear from Victor Oye, we'll go for a quick break and we'll be right back. Do stay tuned. Thank you very much. You're still on to Editor's Forum on Galaxy Television. And right now, we are discussing the security state of the nation. And of course, before we went on that quick break, Victor, I am um, 
Yemi Saka, and of course, Sonia Odiba, she gave their take on the security of the nation. And of course, on the, Sam, on the Benue State Governor Samuel Autumn, saying that the people of the state should go back to their homes, that the IDPs should go back to their homes and defend themselves. Victor Ayer, what do you have to say to this? That is the best uh, statement I've ever heard in this uh, <laughs> period. Because uh, we have reached a stage now that we need to defend ourselves. Because what uh, Dajma said is a, is a clear st statement. I'm from Delta State. There's a place, a village they call Ohoro, in Ugele not, uh, Ugele not local government area. Uh, there was a time the herdsmen were terrorizing the place. Each time there, there's confrontation between uh, herdsmen and uh, farmers. If the herdsmen kill people, you will not see the army come to uh, you know, do anything, but once one has man or uh, once Cow. one has man is killed, you see how many people coming to ransack the whole village. So it's not a new thing. You see, we like to deceive ourselves in this uh, this country, and that's why the country is static. A country where the truth is not being told can never move forward. And anybody thinking that Nigeria will move forward, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm a realist. It's not just by hiding something. Some people say, "Don't call the herdsmen. Who are they?" That's the question. Fine, not, not, not Who are they? Yeah, sorry, I'm not full of the I ask, in the, in the Niger Delta, if they bust all your pipe, who will you measure? <laughs> will you say hey, it, it is a full of the that bust all your pipe? We know every tribe in Nigeria has a trick. We know who is doing what in this country. So you cannot color If you color it, it's, going, it's not going to solve the problem. That they are, they are no longer uh, full of the They are hygienic herdsmen. They are uh, Pope herdsmen. It will not change uh, the status. The killings will continue. So what am I saying? It is high time Nigerians should be allowed to carry guns. Everybody should carry guns. <laughs> because, because he has brought another no, 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 yes. <laughs> in, 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 if you check the countries where everybody has access to guns, like Switzerland, where our politicians are stealing money and hiding money there, they don't even have police. But you know that before you go and attack somebody, that person is, is armed like yourself. You will think twice. The reason why these things are happening is because they know that the people are porous. They are not armed. And um, before the killing started in, B in Benue, don't forget the fact that they mop up arms from those people. Immediately, they collected arms from them. They started, the herdsmen started to invade that place. So this mopping up arm, of arms that is ongoing, I will advise that people should be careful because we don't know what is coming behind this. Before you know now, <laughs> the, before you know now, the herdsmen killing will be worse. All right, thank you very so, much. Uh, <laughs> the advice of Otom is the best. Everybody. <laughs> Defend yourself All because right. the armed forces have failed Nigeria. Everybody has it, though, our own opinion. Of course, the government is having a prohibition of illegal firearms right now, which is continuous. And of course, a lot of firearms have been recovered from both criminals and individuals. But now let's take a look at this. Now, if we say that the people should defend themselves, what are the implications on the country? I mean, look at this um, of a bank robbery now. What if people start reacting and say, okay, if the state cannot secure us, then let us fight? What do you think will be the implication locally and, of course, globally on the people? Yes, I, I, I will start with this. When people have the right to bear hands, you're prob you probably you are scared if that's going to cause, cause an escalation of crime rate. No. What you have to do beyond the increase is gun-related violence. Not is that not still crime? No, not necessarily crime. Not necessarily homicide. But that's, let's clarify that. And secondly, you see, this brings another topic to the table, restructuring. There's, need, there's a need for state police. I've been to Ofa, I've passed through Okuku, on through Emile, into Ofa. I think the only thing you have there is probably a Nava school of health that's around. So it's like, Nigeria is not so large, but Nigeria is ineffectively policed, or under policed. And the best way you can bring security closer to the people if it's controlled by the states. I mean state, not federal government. State as in state as in state governors and state government. Because if we can if we are state, if the federal government is controlling the army and you having this call of bias, then we can as well leave the governors controlling the police. And let's not because whether you like it or not, if there's a state police in place in Benway and there's a state police in place in, in, in Offa, the commissioner of police as we speak would have been sacked. That's the truth. Then there's a state police in Benue that knows that his destiny and him being on the job is at the mercy of the governor. He will do his job. 
even with the redeployment of the IGP in no, no, because by the time by the time you have by the time you have a state police, the IGP becomes a ceremonial head. All right, thank you very <laughs> much, Yemi Saka. Now, some people say that insecurity is caused by illiteracy and, of course, um, unemployment. And people are saying that there's a lot of poverty in the land now. Would you say that this is one of the reasons why we're still having this high rate of insecurity in the country? Uh, well, I think uh, those uh, indicators are too elementary. Thank you. Uh, basically, the insecurity that Nigeria is suffering today is more of politics than crime. Okay. Now, I sympathize with the president. The reason why people are becoming disenchanted is that they probably have come to the conclusion that the president may be playing politics with national security. Now, when there was killing in Benue, I fought at president we started hearing gunshots. To the IG to relocate. When he visited Benue, he said he never knew the IG did not comply with his directive. Yes. What did he do? Up to now, nothing. Now, the IG had relocated to Zamfara. In the presence of the IG, they are still killing. Now, when some persons, because when they came up with this information that they are disarming, the question is who are they disarming? Are they disarming the herdsmen? Or are they disarming indigents? When some persons, suspected persons, uh, were said to move to, from Benue into Natarawa to kiss some cows, the president was in Natarawa. And his statement that they should not take Reprisal, they should not uh, on go on reprisal attack and all that. Now they would, then after that, they went into operation in Benue and they said they were disarming people. Who were they disarming? The locals. There was even a report that... They, they were they, they, their guns and what are Yeah, they, they were even report that they even met, they even uh, arrested a, a herbalist, a native doctor, who prepared child for them. And meanwhile, just like he was saying, because it's all these activities, they raise suspicion. Whether you are weakening the local people and empowering the killers. Okay? Like the like Nigeria's in the UK. They say that the president should protect human lives and not protect cows. It's a strong message to the international community. So if, if I were to show the president, I should suspend everything about playing politics with national security. It doesn't matter who is involved if a politician deals with that politician. To make sure you get results, because it is this, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I was I, I was at a restaurant recently, and my friend went there. He said he doesn't want meat. I was asking, do you have goat meat? They said no, and uh, he didn't want fish. And he said that of every piece of every piece of car you buy, you are buying bullets for the herdsmen. You understand the message? Yeah. So people are beginning to have reorientation. So even with the president, and by the time you begin to boycott the purchase of cow meat, those who invested in that business will, will, will suffer. So I, I think it's time for the president, because when people are say, resorting to self-defense, it means that the state is going into extinction. So the government is collapsing. And it's a dangerous trend. All right, thank you very much. Now, on the final, let's hear from you, Victor. Aya. What do you think that the government should do to address this issue of insecurity in the country? Uh, we must uh, restructure this country. <laughs> if we want to move forward, we must restructure. <laughs> this system cannot go anywhere. We have been on this track for how many years? 56 years, uh, 1966 to today. That is 52 years that uh, the, the military struck that dismantled the structure we had before. 1954 to 1966 was 12 years when the regions were created. If you compare and contrast the development achieved that was achieved between that time and now, you find out that just 12 years, we achieved massive achievement. We made massive achievement. But since that time to now, we have been retrogressing. Are we going to continue to retrogress? The answer is no. So we have to restructure Nigeria. Okay. Look, even look at it. The world is turning away from oil now. But you have a president who is bent on looking for prospective for oil in the Northeast. About $30 billion of our hard-earned money has been spent 
in prosperity for crude oil in the northeast. Why the whole world is now looking away from oil? So if we are running a system that a, the life of 180 million people is tied to one man, and it shouldn't be so. The state supposed to be independent country led by the government. They supposed to run their own system and pay a little tax to the federal government, as it is done in America. That's why they are trying it. That's why they are moving. But here, no, it is whatever the president wants. That is what is binding on all, every one of us. And that is why you see killings are going on now. The federal control police cannot do anything. If we have state police, there is no way a, a, a governor in Benue we have its own state police and foreigners because they have designed their as foreigners. They are no longer Nigerians. <laughs> foreigners will just come with their with their cattle from from <laughs> from what uh, God knows which country and be killing your people. Then the commissioner of police that is um, appointed by the governor will sit down and be watching. It, it can never happen. I've never seen a country where human beings are killed for animal to live. It's, a, it's an aberration in the highest level that human beings that God created to be in charge of animal, that human beings are being killed for animal to live. It's a country that is not desirable. All right, thank you very much. One minute, please. Yeah, my final submission. It's actually, I think it's wrong for us to think illiteracy is what is responsible for insecurity. I'll tell you there are some scarcity crimes we have right now because that's what we are, comp we are, we are confronting as a nation. You need a bit of intelligence to know how to assemble a C4, attach a restructure to make it a time bomb. So, it is not illiteracy. Like you said, it is politically motivated. And I want to tell that line. All right, thank you very much. And of course, today we've had different views. We've talked about um, President Muhammadu Buhari's declaration to run for the 2019 presidential election. And of course, we've looked at the state of security of the nation with a lot of things happening, a lot of lives being lost. The author bank robbery, farmers, headsmen, killings, clashes. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> and of course, the ninety Delta militants, a lot of insecurity in the country. And what we do hope and pray for is that the government takes proactive measures to curb the state of killings in the country for a better Nigeria. It has been a very big pleasure hanging out with Yemi Saka, Sonia Divashi, <laughs> and of you. course Victor Aya. Yes, if I say people's man now, he would say he doesn't know where he's from. No problem about that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good uh, appellation. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Till next <laughs> time on this me. same station, Guide to Television, for another edition of NHS Forum. My name is Rita Omodia, and to our viewers out there, our audience, thank you very much for staying tuned. Have a blessed day. The state of the nation's economy leaves much to be desired. Nigerians grapple with one sort of issue to the other on a daily basis. Sometimes the arguments get heated. No, 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 no. Tempers even flare. There is a high level of unemployment and poverty in the land. The military did not come and bomb villages of innocent people. His action is coming very late because we ask the legislature you know, to, to reduce your salaries.